new business models, they're starting to peel apart and, and one group is focusing on the local. It is going back to the roots of where, in this case, journalism comes from and what has been underserved for such a long time because everybody was out after the almighty dollar and, and, and uh, prizes and international coverage and national coverage. So I like the focus on the local and that the international and world will still be there. It will always be there now. But that, you know, whether it's at the student level in a particular program or it might be using social networks, limited social networks to get information to start with, or in your case, maybe, you know, a city or, or um, a Metroplex-wide effort, I can see this, like Craigslist has, you know, at Craigslist, all of, cities all over the world, this kind of thing could be Dallas, could be Fort Worth, could be Metroplex, Houston, Oklahoma City, anybody that really wants something, um, and, and work at it from that level rather than from the top down. Dan, let me just add one last thing uh, to this. That, uh, I, when I'm analyzing this, there was three areas of art that, that right now I've identified. And so it's what motivates artists. And so I see art for the sake of art, which is kind of at the university level and that esoteric art that's like, okay, what do you do with that? You know, it's a stone with a feather on it that someone stepped on. And it's hard to sell that art. Uh, then there is the business of art. And, and it's what happens with the business of art is you have to think about all that left brain stuff. Selling it, your art, inventory, do you have enough? How do you market yourself? All that kind of stuff that my observation is a lot of artists really don't want to think about or they're not very sophisticated. And then art as a business. And then that's, so that's, uh, is creating your art but with a specific audience in mind. And is what, is, so is what I want to do is with, the, with this art side, is I want to address, the, I'm sorry, I'm reading it, just, is that I want to address the common pitfall of artists to ignore the business of art for the sake of art. And I think that, and it's almost like what I heard Nicole saying, it's like, I don't really think of art that way. But if you are a professional artist, someone has to think about it for you. And I come back to facilitation. And matter of fact, the artists are the last people I'm talking to about this project because I really have gotten a response like, oh man, I don't deal with the man, I don't do that. You know, it's, it's like, okay, but yeah, but this could benefit you. Like, no, I don't do that. And it's like, okay, but if I can create something that can help them succeed and do what they do do, then they'll come on board. So that's where really I, I don't even try to talk to artists at this point. But when I go and talk to the business leaders and community leaders, they're excited about it. And they're like, yeah, I see that. And, you know, when you get a little bit closer, let me know. So anyway. Yeah, go ahead. The point from which I'm, I'm coming from, or, or what my world is, being an educator in an art museum. <laughs> um, and so I want, it's like, why not have a fourth component that's about, you know, the, that community aspect, or, or somehow the artists, again, that artist role in the community, or... or that's a huge piece of it. Um, and I keep wanting to hear more of that, I guess, because it just needs to settle a little bit. There is, there is a, um, Dig, are you familiar with the website Dig? Yes. Okay, so that actually would be a feature with this, but the way it would work, and let me give you a small example, the stew pot, are you familiar with the stew pot uh, downtown? Uh, the stew pot is uh, a project done by the Methodist Church downtown, is that right? Presbyterian. Presbyterian Church. And they feed homeless people, and but they have different projects for homeless people as well. And one of them is they have them paint, do art, and then they sell their work. And I don't know, does all the proceeds go back to them? 90%. 90 percent goes back to the homeless person that produces art. 10% to the art program. 10 to the art program. Awesome program, it's really great, and some of the art's really nice. And they get that, they put, like the library will host shows for them, and different people like their and individual host shows for them. But you know what? It's only 50% of what it could be. But you know why? Because it's the stew pot and one woman is running the entire thing. So it's what they need is volunteers. And it's what they need is volunteers that understand the process. And it's what they need is volunteers who are creative and passionate and can help them be better. So it's what happens is a site like this is people say, I know this awesome idea. And so we need to do it. And they put it out there. 
And then three or four or five or six people locally say, I'd like to be a part of that. And so the dig thing is it starts getting support and it moves to the top and it becomes important. And then all of a sudden using something like Meetup, it becomes a date. Like, okay, we're gonna do this on this date. And one great example with the stew pot, uh, Kate and I noticed this recently, is that, so we walk in there and they've got a whole room of frames. And then they have, next to that, they have a whole room of canvases. But the canvases and the frames don't match because they're donated. So all framers, they, they're very generous and they give them frames, but they're these odd sizes. You've got 21 inches by 84 inches, you know, or 12 by 16, or these just odd sizes, which don't match these canvases that were donated probably by Michaels or someone like that. So they can't really use the frames and they're using the canvases. Well, what if someone just went in and found a framer and said, hey, would you resize these frames for $5 a piece or $4 a piece or for free and, and donate it to the stew pot? I'm sure in a day you could find someone to do that. But it takes someone to go out there and do that, which the woman that runs it doesn't have time to do that. Then they could get all these frames to fit the canvases and then they would be able to have their art would look better and it would sell for more. Well, this is a project that the Artist Consortium could facilitate and when you have 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 local artists that are looking for ways to give back to the community that's supporting them, that they care about, it's a no-brainer. Um, one last thing, I'm going to make one last comment and then we're going to wrap it up because we've hit 11 o'clock. Um, what this reminds me of, and this is a, a smaller crowd, but I've, I've, I've asked Nicole and she's, she's had no, uh, uh, no input, no time to even think about this at all. But these kinds of subjects, I think, are worth having some, one of those. The tech community does this all the time. They bring these people together and they just, they call them the unconferences, you know. They get people together and they talk about the issues and they try to come up with these new ideas and they forge ahead, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's like if the DMA was able to sponsor something like that and get people from different works or different walks of the art life in Dallas, because you're right, I mean, in, there's so many of these little pockets out there that I think if they knew or there's a way to attract them to something and it builds and it becomes a larger entity type thing, whether it's this or, or other solutions that exist, but um, you know, getting Art Institute and uh, UNT, UTD, Meadows, all the different art programs out there, and then eventually the, uh, the, in, the galleries and that kind of stuff involved. Start the dialogue. To start the dialogue, and I mean, essentially, what's what we're doing here. But I'd also like to see it go at a at a larger level because I want you guys to be able to get input as to what it is, what what could really make that thing take off. And who knows? Maybe there's an investor that's sitting out there that goes, "I really like your idea. Here's hundred thousand dollars to get you started." People like that. Okay. Well, Scott, thank you. Well, that's nice. Excellent timing. <laughs> <laughs> No, I appreciate that. Um, one of our, our uh, esteemed videographers, not video, I'm, uh, filmmakers. <laughs> Had shown us stuff earlier. Thanks for staying. I appreciate it. Durie, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Durie, you may present here in the future as well some of your work. She's a uh, professional conga player and uh, is interested in dreams and has been creating. Uh, podcasts and different types of shows, it's, I guess independent, the dreams and the music, but then at some point you may be merging the two as well. So. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. We really enjoyed it. Thanks. Good night. Okay. <laughs> okay.